good evening to all of you i welcome all of you to the last topic of this course so we are into the last part part 4 of this course we started with part 1 on introduction and essentials where i had presented introduction to cfd development application analysis then i had gone into essentials of fluid mechanics and heat transfer and essentials of numerical methods for cfd part 2 was on the various modules or component for developing cfd code or software for cartesian geometry problem or a simple geometry problem part 3 was on cfd development for complex geometry problem using curvilinear structured grid there is another method in cfd for complex geometry which is on structured grid cfd development on a unstructured grid which is outside the scope of this course so part 1 part 2 part 3 most of the time i had focused into cfd development but i had not presented cfd application analysis in detail out of the three thing development application analysis this is a subject where you learn to develop a product cfd software and that is the most challenging part of any learning process so the cfd development is the most difficult and challenging part so this course is mostly on cfd development however i have introduced a part 4 where i am presenting cfd application analysis i'll be presenting this cfd ap application analysis this again there are millions of problems in cfd i'll present some illustrative cfd application analysis broadly i had classified into two class of problem cfd for academia and cfd for industries so i'll take this lecture and the next lecture on demonstrating you some of the representative cfd applications so first i will start with certain problem which are of academic interest although they have a scope for industrial application then i'll show you problems where where uh, for problems in industries cfd problems in industries for all the problems that i'll be presenting for cfd in academia uh, the in house code has been developed in the cfd lab at iit bombay by the phd students and the mtech students in our lab and for cfd for industries uh, we have for industrial problems we have used commercial software which i'll present little later now um, the this course is on cfd for a single phase flow where you develop code for single fluid but the application analysis that i'll be presenting here will be corresponding to especially for academia i'll be presenting problems which are uh, like topics in advanced computational fluid dynamics so this this is this course is like a first course in cfd although there could be an advanced topic like cfd for turbulent flow cfd for uh, multi phase flow cfd for fluid structure interaction so if you consider most of the cfd application analysis in the present day uh, there are some challenging problems so i will show you the illustrative application analysis for for uh, for advanced cfd problems here i will show you some problem which corresponds to fluid structure interaction so till now i had been showing we have been solving problem where like when you solve lid driven cavity flow problem the fluid region is fixed but there are certain problems which are called as moving boundary problems so like if you consider fish swimming it's a moving boundary problem so here i am presenting the illustrative cfd application for i'll present for two problems biomimetic cfd study on various types of fish like body shape kinematics and swimming of 2d and 3d hydrofoil i'll present this in more detail in the next slide then i'll present flow induced coupled vibration of an elastically mounted cylinder and a detached flexible plate note that this two problems corresponds to an area of cfd which is called as computational fluid structure interaction there are various problems in which the fluid interacts with structure the structure can be rigid or flexible if it is flexible then you have to solve for structural deformations also 
So the, sec so the second problem which I am presenting here, when there is a flexible plate, there is a flow induced forces which leads to the deformation of this plate. Whatever you learned in this course is for where you have learned to develop code for computational fluid dynamics. But the deformation of flexible plate comes from computational structural dynamics. You learned in this course finite volume method for fluid dynamics. In our lab, we are working to develop finite volume method for structures also. Commonly in structures, finite element method is more popular. In fluid dynamics, finite volume method is more popular. But for fluid structure interaction problem, worldwide what people do is that they use finite volume code for fluid and finite element code for structure. So the, a PhD student in our lab developed finite volume for fluid and finite element for structure which I will presenting here. But presently one of the PhD student in our lab is using developing finite volume method based solver for structures also. So here I will show you some challenging applications where not only computational fluid dynamics but computational structural dynamics is also involved. It is a coupled problem because the flow induced forces act on the structure and if the structure is flexible, it gets deformed. And if the, when the structure deforms, the flow region changes near to the structure. So I'll show you two problems corresponding to fluid structure problem, which is first is the fish inspired study and the second is the uh, flow induced vibration of an elastically mounted cylinder and flexible plate, which has an application in energy harvesting. For CFD application and analysis for industrial problems, I will present the first problem on CFD study on a radiator fan assembly of a power transformer. Okay, this work has been done when I was a CFD consultant to global R&D Crompton Greaves. So, uh, and we had published a paper on this where we have done a CFD simulation for a radiator fan assembly of a power transformer, which I will present maybe in the next lecture. Then in our lab, uh, we have done CFD study for a heat exchanger, which is a, like a new type of heat exchanger, which is called as 3D printed heat exchanger. And we have studied the thermal hydraulic characteristics and its performance. So this two problems I will be presenting for CFD application analysis for industries. In today's lecture, I will be focusing mostly on CFD for academia. In the next lecture, I will be taking CFD for industries. Okay, so let me get started with illustrative CFD application analysis for academia. I will first start with the first problem, biomimetic CFD study on various types of fish like body shape, kinematics and swimming. Okay, so there are three different studies. Actually, this study was done by uh, two PhD students in our lab. And the code which is used for the study has been developed from scratch in our lab. And there are the code involves computational fluid dynamics as well as computational structural dynamics. Okay, so now let me get started with some background. Fishes are of various types. There are thinner fishes, fishes there are thicker fishes. But broadly, there is one type of fish which is called as BCF, is body caudal fin fish. In that fish, there are broadly four classes of fishes called as anguliform, subcarangiform, carangiform, and thuniform. So, if you compare all these fishes, four type of fishes, these are called as body caudal fin fish because they have a body, all of them have a body, and some of them have a fin. Fin is what? Tail. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> if you look into the undulations, like how, what do you do to swim? you do some undulation of your body or hand. Fishes do not have any hand, so they undulate their body or their tail. So with this, they try to generate a force which is called as thrust force. Like if you are stationary in a river, then the force that acts on your body is a drag force. The fluid the water in a river will try to drag you along its direction. But when you start undulating your body or hand, 
then what do you do is you generate a force which is negative to the drag, which is a thrust. Then you move in the forward direction. Okay, so, so there are four types of fishes and if you see the body undulation, the body undulation is maximum for angliform. It reduces in subcarangiform, carangiform, in thiniform it is almost stationary, body is stationary. But if its body is stationary, how can it swim? The nature has given it tail to undulate. This, this thin fish does not have any tail, so it has no option, only body to undulate. This fish has both body and tail and it so turned out that this fishes are thin and this fishes are thick. So the nature has created in such a way for thinner fishes they can undulate their bodies, for thicker fishes you can also imagine body undulation is difficult for thicker one, but they undulate their tail. Okay, so there are, so what we have done is that when you do a CFD study especially in an academic world, you uh, you try to pose a research problem that uh, like fishes have two types of motion, body undulation and tail pitching. So in a single study, if you want to study the effect of this kinematics, this is called as what is called unified kinematics. So we want to study, so what we did is that rather than taking full 3D body which will be too difficult to simulate, we have taken a hydrofoil, a 2D hydrofoil Naka 0012. And this hydrofoil, the motion that I showed you is body undulation. This body undulation corresponds to that of an angliform fish. Is it okay? And this is what? This is a pitching motion of the tail of the thicker fish. So this is the body undulation of thinner fish and this is the tail pitching of the thicker fish. And for these fishes, their motion is somewhere in between their body, so their body undulation is less than this. Okay, so this corresponds to the body undulation of thinner fish, this corresponds to the body undulation of subcarangiform fish. So with a single study, we want to study all the types of motions, kinematics. So we have defined what is called as unified kinematics. So in the unified kinematics, the expression is like this. The expression is like this, you can see that Note that when you have to do this CVD simulation, you have to uh, mo you have to create motion of this with respect to time, motion of this body. Like it's not flow across a stationary cylinder. This body is not stationary. So not only the velocity, pressures, and pressures are varying with respect to time. This shape of this body should also change with respect to time. Is it okay? So you need a separate equation for kinematics which is shown here. What is delta y? Delta y is the displacement of the mean chord from the horizontal center line at various x location. This delta y is a function of x where x is the distance from the leading edge and this delta y varies linearly this is a function, this delta y is a function of two param, I should say three parameters, lambda and this amplitude, ax. It is basically a sine function, it is a traveling wave. The amplitude is a function of x, okay, it is a linear function. At x equals to 0, this amplitude will be 0. So the head is stationary and the maximum amplitude will be at the tail. So it is an equation of a travelling wave. So if you take this equation, we have demonstrated that for low value of lambda, lambda is equal to 0.8, you get this motion. And as you keep increasing the lambda at intermediate lambda, you get, get this. 
and at a very large lambda you get this motion. So we proposed a unified kinematic equation which can model all these three motions. And we did a unified kinematic study for various types of, because this kinematics is corresponding not only to the body undulation of the thinner fish, but it also corresponds to the tail undulation of a thicker fish. So this was the first study done in our lab. Okay, uh, so just to tell you, lambda is equals to 1 gives you this, lambda is equals to 2 gives you this motion. Lambda is equals to infinity I am showing you, but later on I will show you after lambda is equals to 7 or 8, it asymptotes. So for larger lambda greater than 8 up till infinity, you get this type of motion. In this cases, there are two forces. In which plane this fishes undulate? Vertical plane or horizontal plane? Horizontal plane. Okay, so the force is not lift force, it is a lateral force. And this is a thrust force. If the flow is in the positive x direction, then the drag force acts in the positive x direction and this is your th thrust force, which is a negative of drag force. And this is not lift force, it is a lateral force because the body undulate on a horizontal plane, not on a vertical plane. Fish is undulate on a horizontal plane. So this was the first study which was done. So I am just giving you the background of the three problems in a single slide, then I will show you the result one by one for each problem. All this problem are inspired by the observation in nature. Biologists have reported these observations and we have tried to mimic it through the kinematics and uh, shape and size of the fishes. And we have considered a hydrofoil, 2D hydrofoil, we are not considering full fish. But even then we are able to answer certain uh, observation which have been reported by the biologist. Okay, now what biologists have reported is that this thinner fish, when it is attacked by thicker fish, what it will do? It has to speed up. So then what it does? It changes its wavelength of undulation. Is it clear? So, it, what it does? It adapts the wavelength of undulation of a thicker fish. And its speed increases. But till now nobody has studied this from CFD and found, demonstrated quantitatively. Because speed increases means thrust should increase. So that was the motivation. And this thinner, actually when you consider kinematics, there are, the lambda is not the only parameter. There is this A max also, this A x. Now each of these fish have a different A x and lambda. So what we thought is, let us, we did a study which is called as adaptive kinematics. What is adaptive kinematics? If this thinner fish adapts the lambda of the thicker fish, in reality, that's what has been observed. But when you are doing a computational study, you have the freedom to, even if it is not adapting thicker fish, let us try to make it adapt and then see what happens. Although finally we'll show that it is not advantageous. So nature, we prove that what nature is doing is quantitatively we are demonstrating that it is indeed the correct one. So what we did is that the thinner fish in reality adapts only the lambda, but we also made it adapt the AX, which I'll show you in the next slide. And we did vice versa also. Although thicker fish doesn't adapt the amplitude or lambda of thinner, but we thought let us change it and then see what, what is the advantage or disadvantage in doing it. Obviously there should be the disadvantage, that's why it's not doing it, but we wanted to prove quantitatively Okay, now there is a third observation. The, the observation is these thicker fishes, they have to travel a very long distance. Like thinner fish, they are very localized, but these thicker fish travel very long distance. 
Now to travel the very long distance, it has been found that this is like a continuous swimming because it's undulating continuously. There is another type of swimming which is called as burst and coast. Burst means it's undulating and coast means it's rest, resting. So once one cycle it undulate, one cycle it rest. This is called as burst and coast. So we wanted, whenever you make, do this study, nature always have that there is a prize and you get something out of that prize. So what is the prize in this case? That it has to spend certain energy in undulating. So there is an input power which is involved for undulation. And to, by spending that input power, what does it achieve? It achieves a propulsion velocity. So what do you think? Propulsive velocity will be less or more when it does burst and coast. What is input power is less or more? Less. So obviously the propulsive velocity will be less. But we wanted to know quantitatively how much is the reduction in propulsive velocity and how much is the reduction in input power. Later on I will show you that there is much larger reduction in power as compared to reduction in propulsive velocity. Reduction in propulsive velocity means what? You are traveling in car, speed is low, then what will happen? It will take more time to travel. It will take large time to reach the destination. So the beauty of burst and coast is, it takes larger time to reach the destination, but it saves a lot of power. I will show you quantitatively percentage wise. Okay, so these are certain observations where for adaptive kinematics and burst and coast swimming, we showed quantitatively the advantages that has been reported in the literature. Now this burst and coast swimming is done only by thicker fish, not by thinner fish. But in competition, you can make it do because you are working in virtual world. So we did that. And we found that there is no, there is not substantial advantage, appreciable advantage. And that's why probably in nature it doesn't do it. Okay, so I hope you can understand and appreciate this story behind the three studies. So the first unified kinematic is using a single equation, we want to study the various types of undulations, undulations of body, pitching of the tail and intermediate motions. The motivation of this adaptive kinematics is to let the thinner fish adapt the lambda of the thicker fish and vice versa and then try to see quantitatively. There are two things when you want to study in this case. Uh, one is uh, thrust coefficient, second is uh, propulsive efficiency. Okay, because when I say there is uh, input and output, you can also calculate the efficiency. So we will, uh, because, uh, so that using the propulsive efficiency and thrust coefficient, we will try to compare the actual case with adaptive cases. And then finally, we will, I will show you the comparison for input power coefficients. And all these studies we had done for various lambdas. So let us get started with the first study, a biomimetic CFD study on unified kinematics for various type of body caudal fin fish like undulating hydrofoil. Okay, so I am showing you this quant, uh, uh, unified kinematic study. Uh, for a case, let us suppose this fish is, um, there are two types of propulsion which is commonly used. Like um, many a times underwater, if you have a, let us say underwater piping in oil and, oil and gas sector, like typically in our country, ONGC, you know, in seabed they have pipelines. Now to test the condition of the pipeline for maintenance, what do, how do they do? They need to scan the surface. Now to do that, they, they have a ship 
and they have a towing object. Okay, so the towing object is connected to the ship and the scanning instrumentation is in that towing object. Is it okay? So as ship moves, it takes the towing object along with it. T third propulsion is something like that, where let us suppose this fish is moving with a constant velocity and to begin a CFD simulation, this is easy to set up. In actual cases, when the body undulate, there will be an acceleration. Note that in CFD simulation, we do not want to move our whole domain. Ideally, we would like the domain to be fixed and we use a frame of reference attached to the body. So the first tethered propulsion is like this fish is moving with a constant velocity. So if it is moving with constant velocity in CFD simulation, rather than keeping water stationary, we can consider water moving with the velocity of the fish in the opposite direction. So we keep use a frame of reference attached to the fish body which is moving with a constant velocity and we have a uniform inlet and C is the chord length which we take as the length scale. Upstream this is the computational domain and this is the computational setup where I am showing you the geometrical information of the domain as well as this hydrofoil and uh, this is a non-dimensional study where the velocities and pressures are non-dimensional. Velocity is non-dimensionalized by the inlet velocity which is the ve constant velocity of the fish. C is the chord length. So upstream of the this body we have taken 5 times of C and downstream 11 times of C. And the height of the computational domain we have taken it to be 8 times of chord length. We have used free slip boundary condition on the top and bottom boundary, inlet at the left boundary and outlet at the right boundary. The length scale as I mentioned is the chord length, the velocity scale is the free stream velocity, the time scale is C by U infinity. The non-dimensional parameter are Reynolds number based on the uh, inlet velocity or the fish constant velocity and the chord length. Uh, note that in this problem uh, along with the Reynolds number there are some uh, kinematic space parameter like this body where it undulates there are two things one is the amplitude and second is the frequency. Any traveling wave these are the two input parameter frequency of undulation and amplitude of undulation is it okay? Because it is a periodic motion it has it needs to have a frequency. So we have a non-dimensional frequency which is which is called as Strahl number and we have a non-dimensional maximum amplitude in that traveling wave which is called as A max. So these are two kinematics parameter. This is a geometrical governing parameter which is corresponding to the lambda divided by C because in our kinematic equation this lambda corresponds to the wavelength of the traveling wave. And uh, this is the equation which is used for the lateral displacement in a non-dimensional form. So this is the non-dimensional parameters and these are the input parameters. So this simulation has been done for a null number of 5000. We have taken six different Strahl numbers, so six different frequency of undulations. And we have taken 15 different lambda values varying from 0.8 to 8 and infinity. So 15 into 6, there are a total of 90 simulations for this study. The A max here is taken as 0.1. The output parameter as I had mentioned is this is the dimensional form of the thrust force. This is a non-dimensional form which is called as thrust coefficient. This is the lateral force and this is the non-dimensional forms called as lateral force coefficient. And this is the propulsive efficiency, propulsive efficiency is equals to output divided by input. What is the output? This thrust force multiplied by the free stream velocity, force multiplied by velocity is the output power. And what is the input power? Input power is the power which is required to undulate this body. Okay, so you at, when you draw very various vertical lines, you can calculate a CL and a velocity which is a lateral force into velocity and when you do it, do it surface integral, you get the total input power. The input power, so this is a mathematical representation of the power which is required to undulate this body. So in this case, we will we'll be interested in this thrust coefficient and the propulsive efficiency. Okay, so this is the figure. I have mentioned there are two parameters which are varied. What is, one is lambda. And what is this lambda? Smaller lambda undulation, larger lambda pitching and intermediate lambda intermediate motions which I had shown you in the earlier slide. Is it clear? So this case is larger lambda corresponds to undulation of the tail of the thicker fish. 
this corresponds to undulation of the thinner angliform fish and this corresponds to the intermediate motion of subcarangiform fish. So for various lambda we have various kinematics and for various kinematics this is the thrust coefficient. So in and this is for various frequencies this is at low frequency. So as you increase the frequency you can see the thrust is increasing. All of you know that if you undulate your body more you might have seen during swimming if the frequency of undulation you also do periodic motion and if the frequency is more you get generate more thrust force. So larger is the frequency of undulation larger is the thrust force another thing to note is that the which one gives you more thrust tail pitching or body undulation tail pitching larger lambda gives you more thrust and how is the variation it is an asymptotic increase this is thrust now we will go to efficiency. So we get a relationship where thrust is more for larger frequency and larger lambda larger lambda corresponding to pitching motion whereas propulsive efficiency is larger so although thinner fish generate smaller thrust but you can see that they have more efficiency propulsive efficiency whereas thicker fish they generate larger thrust but they have to spend more power. For thinner fish this is the um, vorticity contour and for thicker fish this is the vorticity contour. For thinner fish this is the body undulation you can see this is the body undulation and for thicker fish it is the pitching motion. Point to note is that the strength of the vortices as shed vortices as well as the size of the vortices are much stronger in pitching motion. There are two types of vortex shedding one is called as forward von Kormann and second which is called as reverse von Kormann street. Like if you are standing in a river if you do not do anything on the back side of your you will get a forward von Kormann street. But as soon as you start moving your hand you will get a reverse von Kormann street. What do you do when you move your hand? You are basically pushing the fluid. So large you on the back on your back side you are trying to accelerate the fluid is it ok? If you if you are standing if you are not moving your hand, hand on the back side there is a flow separation and in the separated region there is a velocity deficit that is called as wake region. But when you move your hand you accelerate you increase the low velocity region in the wake and you create a jet and in the case of forward von Kormann street you have a blue vortex at the top and red vortex in the bottom. But in reverse von Kormann street after the vortex is shed the red vortex which is the anti clockwise vortex which is above the clockwise vortex. So the reverse von Kormann street is a signature of thrust generation forward von Kormann street is a signature of drag generation. So as I say this movies are scientifically exciting movie they reveal the cause why there is a thrust in this, this is a signature reverse von Kormann street which corresponds to thrust. As I had mentioned in my first topic that we try to create various types of movies. We create field plot for scientifically exciting movie, we create line plots for engineering relevant movies. I showed you this movies for flow across a cylinder, here I am showing you for a much more challenging problem on biomimetic study on uh, for a fish like swimming hydrofoil. So this is the undulating motion and this is the pitching motion. Now this contour now this was earlier movie was for vorticity this movie is for pressure. 
So you will see that there is a low pressure here, there is a high pressure here. So there is a thrust which is being generated. There is a low pressure here, high pressure here. So when this undulation is taking place, you will see this. there is a low pressure here, high pressure here. So there is a thrust which is generated. And here, there is a low pressure here, low pressure here and high pressure here. So this is what is called as pushing based thrust. Because the, when there is an undulating motion, there is a fluid which is pushed, like when you move your hand, you push the high velocity fluid on the back. So this is the, like a pushing based thrust. Why, whereas when you consider this pitching, you will see that the complete bottom either is either it is blue or it is red. But here in this case, you will say it's not. Com this is blue. This is red. But here in this case, at a particular instant, either below is completely red or completely blue. So this is what is called as lift based thrust. Lift based thrust means there is a large lift force is generated, but the left lift force is inclined. I will not say lift it. I should call it as a lateral force. This lateral force is inclined, not vertic vertical. And that lateral force is a component in the horizontal direction that is we call as thrust. I will show you a movie uh, in the next slide which, where I will explain this again. So this movie is synchronized in time where uh, there is a dot which is moving here. And in this dot, there are too many things I am showing. Left axis is for thrust course, right axis is for two more variables, lift coefficient and the tail of the hydrofoil. So we try to correlate this lift lateral force, thrust force with pressure by playing these movies together. This is for undulation motion of the thin fish and this is for pitching motion of the thick fish, tail of the thick fish. Okay, so the earlier slide I had shown you x axis was lambda star. Here what is in the x axis? Strahl number, which is the frequency of undulation and for various lambdas. So with increasing frequency, as I had mentioned, the thrust, thrust force increases. For smaller frequency, you can see there is a transition from negative thrust to positive thrust, means drag to thrust. Okay. So at smaller frequency, you may have a drag, and as you keep the increasing the frequency, you will get thrust. Like if you are standing in a river, if you start moving your hand slowly, with low frequency, you will still be dragged. But when you increase the frequency of your body undulation, you may generate a thrust. So with increasing frequency, there is a transition from drag to thrust. <coughs> and this is a propulsive efficiency. So the thrust increases monotonically with uh, frequency of undulation and with increasing lambda. And the propulsive efficiency is maximum in an inter at an intermediate frequency of undulation. Okay, uh, we have also correlated. Uh, there is a secondary frequency which is generated, uh, which leads to this reverse von Karman street. Okay, so that was about the first study. I am not showing you. Uh, each of the problem in lot of detail. I am showing you the main results. Okay, now the second problem is biomimetic CFD study on adaptive kinematics. The first problem was unified kinematics, where we have tried to combine the undulating motion of thinner fish and pitching motion of the tail of the thicker fish. Now this in this adaptive kinematics, I had mentioned that thinner fish adapts the lambda of thicker fish to increase its speed. And in this case, we have done a simulation, which we, which I will present a little later, which is called a self-propelled simulation. So this is a thinner fish called, such as uh, lamprey, which is an angliform fish. Under normal condition, its lambda is, lambda star is 0.65. This is a thicker fish, one of the thicker fish, caught fish, which has a, under normal condition, its wavelength of undulation is non-dimensional wavelength of undulation is 1, which is equal to cord length. And this is the expression for a, Ax for thinner fish and this is the expression for Ax for thicker fish. So when you want to express the kinematics, there are two parameters, lambda star and Ax. Biologists have observed that the thinner fish 
increases is lambda from 0.65 to 1. But when we did this study, so this fish is found to adapt only lambda. This fish, this adapts only lambda of this not AX and this fish does not adapt lambda or AX of thinner fish in reality. So before we started this study, we did a literature survey and we made this, we came up with this table where uh, for various fishes, uh, thicker fish which are called as karangiform, but there are particular name of various types of thicker fishes like dace, trout, goldfish, cod, mackerel and for thinner fish we have eel, uh, lamprey robot, hackfish robot. So for, we, so basically we uh, collected literature on the ratio of, I mean, say, what we call as fineness ratio, which is the ratio of the length to the maximum thickness. So for thicker fish, of course, um, so the fineness ratio for the thicker and thinner fish we obtained and based on which, uh, because this Naka series, the last two digit uh, gives you the thickness in terms of cord length. Like the, in this case, the thickness is, maximum thickness is 50 per, 15 percent of the cord length. So for thicker fish, you have a large, we use a Naka hydrofoil which with larger number and for thinner fish, you can see we use Naka 005 and for thicker, we have Naka 001522. So for thinner fish and thicker fish, we, we, we can say we did a, did a mapping based on their fineness ratio. We did a mapping based on their fineness ratio with coming up with thinner and thicker Naka hydrofoil. And then we used thinner hydrofoil as Naka 006 and thicker hydrofoil as Naka 0012. Okay, Naka 0012 is close to maybe mackerel and 006 is uh, close to this Pacific hackfish robo. So we took this two as a representative uh, shape of the thinner fish and thicker fish. So thinner hydrofoil and thicker hydrofoil. And for each of them, there are four cases. What is the first case? There are three letters. What is the first letter corresponding? Body shape. Second letter, lambda star. Third letter, AX. So AA means it is using the shape of angliform, lambda of angliform, and AX of angliform. ACA means shape of angliform, lambda of thicker fish and A of angliform, AX of amplitude of, A, AC means the lambda is of thinner, amplitude is of thicker fish, ACC means in all those four cases the first letter is same, same, why because it is the shape is same, thinner fish. In this case it is adapting only lambda, in this case it is only adapting AX. In this case, it is adapting both lambda and AX of thicker fish. Similarly, we did for thicker fish also. This is the adaption of lambda of thinner fish by the thicker fish. This is the adaption of AX of the thinner fish. This is the adaption of both lambda and AX of the thinner fish. In nature, it has been only one adaption has been reported. But when you are doing a computational study, you have an opportunity to explore all the combinations. Although later I will demonstrate quantitatively that what nature does is the best. So in this again, in this case also we did a t-third simulation which I mentioned in the earlier slide and we used the same computational setup. We did this simulation for one Reynolds number 5000, we took only one frequency that is Strahl number 0 0.6, we took only one Amax which is 0 0.1. So as I mentioned, in nature this adaption of lambda is done mostly by thinner fish, angliform fish. Okay. Now in this figure, there is a solid line and there is a dashed line. 
solid line is for the actual case and dashed line is for a adaptive case. Is it clear? In this case, triple A means actual, triple C means actual. Which letter is changing? The second. The second letter corresponds to adaption of lambda. So, this corresponds to adaption of, so the thinner fish using a lambda of thicker. And in this case, thicker fish is using a lambda of thinner fish. So, for thinner fish, this is, we have taken three different NACA, NACA 006, NACA 008 and NACA 0012 and three thicker fish, three NACAs. So, for thinner fish, by adaption, this is thrust coefficient. Thrust is increasing. Thrust increasing means speed will increase. Whereas, for thicker fish, thrust reduces. So, in nature, we demonstrated quantitatively that the thinner fish adapts the kinematics of thicker fish because it, it can increase its thrust which can leads to increase in propulsive velocity. Let us look into adaption of A max which has not been observed and we found almost no change. So, that is why it is not being done by in nature. Like thicker fish adapting A amplitude A x of thicker, thicker fish adapting amplitude of thinner there is hardly any change in thrust coefficient and this has not been adapt found in nature. Let us see both of course, now when you consider both you will get this will be almost same as this result. This is for thrust, this is the output, there is a propulsive efficiency. Now, let us look into the efficiency, thicker fish sorry thinner fish by adaption it is generating larger thrust. But what is happening to efficiency? Note that this is thrust, this is efficiency. What is happening to efficiency? Thrust is more, but the efficiency is reduced. So, it, is, it has to spend much more large, much larger power, input power. Whereas, for thicker fish, the thrust reduces, but the efficiency increases. Okay. So, the bottom line is you will get tired if you want suddenly want to run very fast because you have to spend much more power. So, that is what happens to the thinner fish when it adapts, it increases its thrust, it increases propulsive velocity, but its propulsive efficiency reduces. So, that was the second study. What is the third study? Continuous swimming versus burst and coast swimming. So, this study was uh, burst and coast was done by a PhD student Siddharth in our lab, but when we did this simulation we did what we call as cell propelled simulation which was initiated by Namshad in our lab. Uh, this was done in 2020 and later this was done in 2021. So, in this study uh, for the first time in our lab, uh, earlier we used to do P3 simulation, for this we did the cell propelled simulation. Cell propelled simulation is like a situation that when you start from rest, when you start moving your hand for swimming, there is an acceleration. Okay, so, you, um, so in this case you accelerate and so this you get the transient flow which has been modeled in this case. So, we will study, we study this continuous versus burst and coast swimming using in T third simulation the velocity, here you can see that the velocity is increasing, it is an accelerate, so this fish body is accelerating and then moving with a constant velocity. So, if you have to do this simulation, again we use a relative frame of reference, but rather than make, I'm making it accelerate we what we do is that at each and every time instant we determine its propulsive velocity and that propulsive velocity is used as an inlet boundary condition. <coughs> so, it is like that inlet flow is accelerating based on the propulsive velocity. 
So here we use accelerating non-inertial frame of reference. Okay. Right now this is an academic problem, this is not an industrial problem because <coughs> I am not having let us say underwater vehicle. Because <coughs> this whatever study we are doing, whatever observations we have from our study can be used in better design of underwater vehicles. <coughs> This is an academic problem because we have done a lot of simplification as far as the shape and size of the body is concerned. Okay, so note that here <coughs> it is a time varying inlet velocity based on the propulsive velocity of the fish where we are using an accelerating non-inertial frame of reference fixed to the fish body. <coughs> when you do the study where, where your inlet velocity is varying with time your Reynolds number is defined with respect to the frequency of undulation. We have studied for three frequency based Reynolds number 50, 500 and 1500, three different. We have studied for various lambda 0.8 to 8 and infinity. This is a study on burst and coarse swimming. So there is a parameter which is called as duty cycle. What is duty cycle? Like this is in this case it is 100 percent time it is doing the duty, duty means undulation. Let us say in this case it is undulating for 50 percent of the time and 50 percent time it is resting then duty cycle is 0.5. So we have varied this duty cycle as 10 percent, 25 percent, 50 percent, 75 percent and 100 percent. 100 percent is continuous swimming and we have considered A max equal to 0.1. And the main result, although there are too many results, but I am showing you the main result. Before I go ahead, whenever you do a self propulsion simulation, uh, what happens is, as I mentioned, that initially you, your velocity will increase, then it asymptotes. Like when you do swimming, when you start initially move, let us suppose you are moving your hand with same frequency, same type, periodic motion that initially you will accelerate and then you will approach to a constant velocity, is it okay? Similarly, when the fish body undulate, same motion, periodically they are repeating. Initially they will accelerate and they will approach almost constant velocity. There is a slight fluctuation but almost constant velocity. And this propulsive, this asymptotic propulsive velocity which is almost steady is larger for body undulation or tail pitching, which case it is more. Red is this, this is corresponding to thinner fish body undulation. This orange corresponds to the tail pitching motion of the thicker fish which is here at the top. So you can see that the final asymptotic propulsive velocity is larger for thicker fish. Now if you create a movie when initially from how the vortex grows, initially there is a formation of what we call as dipole. So what it means is that initially there is a larger strength of jet which is formed. So there is a sharp increase in the, there is a larger thrust force. I will show you in the next slide and due to which there is a larger increase in the propulsive velocity. So the flow structure when the body starts undulating, there is a dipole, this vortex are too close, there is a and two counter rotating vortices generate a jet in between the two. Like you can think this is anticlockwise, this is clockwise, in between it will try to drag the fluid. Okay, so there is a, so, so when in this self propulsion simulation, initially the vortex shedding pattern is such that the showed shed vortices are too close, they, what is called as dipole formation. When they are too close, there is a stronger jet which is formed. But as time progresses, the spacing between the shed vortices increases and the strength of the jet reduces. And so that velocity stop almost in, velocity almost stop increasing. This is for the pitching motion, this is for, so this was for body undulation, this is for pitching motion of the tail. And here again you can see that the vortices are of larger size and larger strength in this case. What is this arrow going up and down? This arrow is the resultant force. 
this resultant floats is not exactly vertical and horizontal, but it's slightly inclined on the front side. So it's a small component of thrust, although much larger component of lateral fluids. So note that in this animation, I'm showing you how many things. I'm showing you velocity vector, I'm showing you vorticity contour, I'm also showing you animation of the resultant force acting on this body. And this is with the scale. So there, when the size of this arrow is reducing, means the net force is decreasing. Okay, so when we make movies, you can make where you can correlate the forces with the flow patterns also. Okay, now let me come to the, so last slide was basically to give you the flow features of self-propelled motion. Uh, this is for continuous swimming. This result is what is in the x-axis, time-wise variation of propulsive velocity. This is propulsive velocity. This is input power coefficient. And what are these different colors in this figure? What are the different lines? The blue line is for body undulation. So this is an increasing lambda. Lambda infinity means pitching motion. So you can see that the propulsive velocity well as, as well as input power is less for thinner fish. And propulsive velocity as well as input power coefficient is more for pitching motion of the tail of the thicker fish. Okay, I'll show this for first and coast, 50% duty cycle. So obviously, when it is undulating and then it is resting for half of the time, power will, redu power will reduce, propulsive velocity will also reduce. But how much is the reduction? It is reducing from, let us take the, for, let us take it for a thicker fish, orange. So it is close to, let us say 14, which is going to maybe close to 10. So there is around 30% reduction in <coughs> propulsive velocity. If I take lambda star equals to infinity at very larger time. So we have quantified it. So there is almost 30% reduction in, in propulsive velocity. But how much is the reduction in input power coefficient? From close to maybe 380, it is coming out to maybe 150. So there is a 60% reduction in input power. So there is a much larger reduction in input power as compared to the reduction in propulsive velocity. So it saves much more power, although it takes more travel time. So for the first time, we demonstrated using the CFD simulation quantitatively that this burst and coast, they save much more energy as compared to percentage wise, as compared to continuous swimming, as compared to the reduction in the propulsive velocity or increase in the travel time. Any question on this? Okay, now let us look into this. So I discussed about the lambda infinity, but let us look about the lambda. Let us look into this blue. So this blue, you can see that for blue, the reduction is not that much, like this value and this value and input power coefficient also. If you compare the orange between the burst and continuous and burst and core versus blue, you can see that for thicker fish, the advantage is much more, and this has been found in nature only by thicker fish. So this, and thicker fish only travel long distances, and they use this strategy. So, and we did it for thinner as well as thicker fish, and we showed that for thinner fish, it's not that advantageous. Okay, so all the studies till now were 2D studies. Now we are moving into 3D studies. So the student who started this uh, work um, in 2019, he has gone to US to attend a conference by American Physical Society, DFD, Division of Fluid Dynamics. And there he went to a aquarium. 
and he shot, he come up with this came up with this video what is this fish this fish is it is having a wing type of shape is moving up and down and it is also undulating its body it is called as batoid fish it's a bat like fish so it's it has a wing which is moving like up and down and on the other plane there is a body undulation also in this case and then I had given him this challenge. So he converted the 2D code into 3D code. And to my surprise, he did a detailed study on this, where he modeled the shape of this batoid as an ellipsoid, where the, we have taken various aspect ratios, 0.5 to 1, 1 corresponding to a circle, we have taken various lambda star, we have taken various frequencies of undulation 0 0.2, 0 0.57. We did this simulation for a Reynolds number of 1000. This was a tethered propulsion simulation. So there were 3 into 4 into 3 simulations, this many number of 3D simulations were done. It was quite challenging because uh, for moving boundary problem. He was using a method which is called as immerse boundary method. Note that this is a complex geometry problem, but there is a method called as immerse boundary method where you can use Cartesian grid for complex geometry problem. So, so using immerse boundary method, uh, he, especially when you have thin tails, uh, uh, there is a lot of stability issues to capture this. So, uh, now the kinematics has been modeled like this. So like this is the frontal view and uh, no, this is the side view. Like if you take the side cross section, this is the motion. And if you take the frontal cross section, you get this. So this is like a wing going up and down. So on one plane, it is like going up and down and in another plane, there is a undulating motion. Normally fish do only this motion, but in the other plane, this up and down motion. This motion is in the horizontal plane. This motion is in the vertical plane. This is for, this motion is for this cross section. Okay, note that this is XZ and this is YZ. And these are the vorticity contours based on the cube criteria for 3D case. And for various, with increasing lambda, we found that the thrust coefficient increases. And this, with increasing aspect ratio, the thrust coefficient increases. And in 3D studies, it's very difficult to explain this complex vortex structure. So we came up with some cartoon. Normally, people try to explain it. So there are stream-wise vortices, span-wise vortices. And there is an interaction between the two. There is a vortex ring formation. There is a vortex contrail formation. There is a horseshoe vortex. So we, def we uh, those animation, we created cartoons like this to explain the vortex structures for the various cases. So our simulation based on level set immerse interface method based in-house code reveal a detailed hydrodynamic characteristics and predicts a propulsive performance parameter which may matches with the natural observation reported in the literature. What are the natural observation? Thinner fish adapts the lambda of thicker fish. Burst and quiz swimming is done by thicker, not thinner fish. So this observations we had quantified through CFD simulations and the present series of natural as well as artificial cases of fish inspired study. So note that we not only consider natural, but we also consider adaptive artificial cases. Like thicker fish doesn't adapt the lambda of thicker fish. Thinner fish doesn't do burst and coast. But we did those also. So because in computations, we have the luxury to explore the parameter in much more detail. And this can lead to need based efficient design and development of autonomous underwater vehicle or energy extraction devices. So I will take 10 more minutes. I'll go to the next problem. I'll start this, maybe I'll continue in the next class.
So I had presented in brief the work done by two PhD students. Now this is the work done by another PhD student. This is on flow induced coupled vibration of an elastically mounted cylinder and a detached flexible plate. Note that in the previous studies which I had showed you till now, the fish body is considered as rigid. Although I am not showing you one problem where we studied the flexible body of the fish, I am not showing you the here. But we have a code which was, which uses finite element method for the structures also. And that we has been used for this problem where uh, there is a cylinder which moves up and down and there is a flexible plate which I will present now. So this study was done by a PhD student Charu Mittal. Okay, so fluid structure interaction is what? It is an interaction of a movable deformable structures with external or an internal flow like you might have seen curling of a leaf in wind or fish locomotion, bird flies. These are all fluid structure interaction problem. Uh, the motion of the body interacts with the flow and this is a, it generates a complex flow patterns and there is a flow induced vibration. Engineering application of flow induced uh, vibration is uh, uh, in the early days, uh, this flow, the bridges uh, in certain situations, uh, when its vibration reaches to the matches with the natural frequency, then there is a large oscillation and which leads to the collapse of this bridge. So uh, in the early days, we were interested in suppressing this vibration because uh, there was a danger that if the frequency of vibration matches with the natural frequency of the structure, then it will lead to the resonance and it will collapse. So like with, due to the flow induced forces, this is the vibration of the bridge and here again I am showing an example with the flow induced due to the flow, there is a, a vibration of the beam supporting the traffic light. So initially people were more interested in vortex induced, uh, uh, flow, induced uh, flow induced vibration suppression, they want to suppress this vibration. But recently uh, people are interested in increasing this vibration because there are a lot of places where there is a low flow velocities. And this vibration can be used to harvest energy. Like nowadays we are talking of energy generation for household purposes. So for small energy generations, um, when you have uh, low wind velocities or even low water velocities, we can create small energy extraction devices. So for energy harvesting, this we want to enhance the flow induced vibrations. So this is um, one of the experiment of an energy harvesting yield, there is a flexible surface which is uh, uh, due to the flow it is oscillating and there is a uh, piezoelectric sensor which is attached to it. So this vibration leads to electricity generation. So this is a bladeless wind turbine farm uh, for energy extraction. So motivated by this engineering applications, this problem is widely investigated. This is a computational domain where this, there is a cylinder of diameter D. Uh, now the earlier flow across the cylinder which I had shown, the cylinder was, has a fixed support, it cannot move. But here in this case, we are creating a support that we are allowing it to move, move only in the vertical direction. But we do not want it to move uncontrolled. We want to control its vertical motion. We want to make it vibrate. So what do we do? We attach this cylinder to a spring and a dashpot damper. So when we attach this cylinder to a, so this is like a flow across a cylinder that is instead of fixed support, it is attached to a spring and damper so that we allow its vertical oscillation. And we know for flow across a cylinder, there is a lift force which acts in positive and negative direction alternatively and that can lead to the vertical vibration. So in this study, people have widely investigated this problem but for the first time in our lab, we considered a flexible splitter plate behind this and showed that by putting this flexible splitter plate, now note that when you put a flexible splitter plate. This cylinder is rigid, but when this plate is flexible, due to the flow induced forces, this plate will not only vibrate, it, there is a fixed support at the leading edge and the trailing edge is free and it is flexible. So it will not only vibrate, but it will also deform. 
So we showed through this study for the first time that by using a splitter plate, if you bring the splitter plate close, you can increase the amplitude of vibration. Okay, an increase in the amplitude of vibration, if you are having damping, you can generate larger amount of electricity. Okay, so I will, I think I will take this problem in the next class. Uh, we have studied this, so this is the problem, flow across an elastically mounted cylinder with a splitter, flexible splitter plate. So due to the flow, you can see that the cylinder start moving up and down and this flexible plate not only moves up and down, but it is also deforming. So we, have, we studied this in detail. We, so this, there are various uh, non-dimensional governing parameters we have considered. Uh, the mass ratio, uh, the damping coefficient, there is a U star which is related with the stiffness of the spring. Uh, so when the st uh, stiffness of the spring is small, then when, when the spring is flexible, becomes more flexible, then the U star is large. So what we have varied in, in indirect sense is we have varied the stiffness of the spring and uh, which lead to the variation of U star. So we have varied this U star from 1 to 12.5. We have kept the mass ratio uh, as 1, damping, non-dimensional damping coefficient in 0 0.005. This is the, for the flexible place, this is the bending stiffness. This is the density ratio, density of the solid to the fluid. This is the Poisson ratio. This is the Reynolds number. This is the non-dimensional gap ratio, gap divided by the diameter of the cylinder. This is the non-dimensional length of the plate. This is the non-dimensional thickness of the plate. So I'll the, present the result in the next class. So I'll continue this in the next lecture. Thank you for your attention. I, in the next class, I'll present this problem as well as I'll present a couple of industrial problem on uh, radiator cooling for transformers as well as printed circuit heat exchanger, which is a new technology of heat exchanger. Before I end, if you have any question, I'll be happy to answer. I think I have some time. Let me show you quickly. Uh, this is just to show you that uh, when the U star increases for, <clears throat> these are the result for various gap. So if you don't have plate, the black line is the, what is in the y-axis? Amplitude of vibration. Okay, so this is the amplitude of vibration and this is U star. Increasing U star, you can assume that let us suppose the flexibility of the spring is increasing. So when the spring is more flexible, so what is happening if you, in case of larger gap or if you don't have plate, the trend is the amplitude increases up to certain flexibility of the spring, then at for larger flexibility it reduces. But when you bring the splitter plate closer, it has been found that at larger flexibilities also you can get larger amplitude. The larger amplitude is associated with smaller frequency of oscillation of the cylinder, so that's why it's called as galloping. We say horse gallops, gallops means it has large amplitude but the frequency is small. So in this case also at larger flexibility of the spring, we are demonstrating that when you bring the splitter plate close, you can get larger amplitude, but the frequency is small. So that's why we say that there is a transition from what is this is what is called as VIV response of the amplitude as it gets uh, into galloping. So with increasing flexibility, you are showing that there is a monotonic increase in the amplitude. Okay, so we showed that by bringing the splitter plate closer, you can get a much larger amplitude. This is the ratio, so you can get as large as 14 times. Okay, so in this case, uh, I will continue in the next lecture, but before I end, I would like to show you this animation. This is for uh, larger gap. There is a oscillating wake flow. At a smaller gap, the amplitude increases substantially and the fluid is passing in this gap. Because what happens in this case, the free stream flow is not able to pass in between the plate and the cylinder because the amplitude is not less than the diameter of the cylinder, the amplitude of oscillation. So this plate is not heated by the free, it doesn't face the free stream flow, 
but when you take the bring this plate closer the amplitude when the amplitude of the vibration in, is greater than the uh, diameter of the cylinder 0.5 times it's greater than the radius of the cylinder i should say then there is a gap flow which is generated and this gap flow leads to uh, the force variation hydrodynamic force variation in such a way that there is a larger amplitude i'll continue this in the next lecture thank you for your attention